pleasure working with you um, and appreciate your dedication and enjoy your Wednesdays off. It'll <laughs> <laughs> be fun. Um, do we have? Yeah. <sighs> <laughs> and please introduce yourselves and uh, you say whatever you'd like. There's a microphone right there if you want to try to stand next to one of those. Michelle Marset, um, Health Services, and former board member, Servant Tammy. <laughs> Hi, Beth Kelly. I served with Tammy for uh, several years. And, uh, I just wanted to mention that I can't do this without talking, but um, she um, trained me on a lot of things because she's very experienced in board. I'm always amazed at the strong uh, number of hours that she puts in. Um, the public doesn't realize that uh, I'm just coming to these meetings. It's, the prep is huge. Get ready for these things. You have to do a lot of study. You have to do a, a lot of analysis. And I learned quite a bit from Tammy um, to help me make some of those decisions. She was always consistent with trying to do with the input from parents and um, school system to do best, what's very best for the students. And that was my guidance when I got on the board, and I tried to stick with that too. My decisions were not political, and neither of hers would never know which way we were going to vote. We would just and analyze the right decision and try to make it, um, always keeping the students in, in mind. I learned all that from Tammy Parker. Thank staff and everybody signed by a lot of a lot of your friends <laughs> we appreciate it oh. um, would you like to we'll get a picture up here your husband here and daughter oh, mother. Mother. mom and daughter mom. <laughs> <laughs> come on up and uh, the board oh, and and, uh, and the staff because they're all part of this yeah, you're, yeah, you're coming up. Wait a minute. I am so I'm not going to take this with the doctor today. How are you doing? They're all waiting for you. Gotta, you can't hide this time. you got to be right in the front and your least favorite place to be. Thank you. Excuse me, Miss. You have work to do. Okay.
Mom, she was missing. You don't have to tell anybody that. Good thing the mics aren't working. I think we heard that. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> I don't believe the mics are working. We're working on it. Oh, good. Not broadcast. Oh, good. Thank God. Why? Okay. Have you? Beauty queen over here. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I like that gotcha. <laughs> I don't let him out much. <laughs> I know she said that after they left. Right? <laughs> <laughs> she gotta go home with those people. Yeah, I gotta go home with those Gotta go home with those people. Okay. Okay. Are we live? We're live. We had a little problem with our audio, but I, we're telling us back online now. So thank you all very much for that. That was very unexpected and, and putting me on the spot. Thanks so much. <laughs> so since this, this is my last official board meeting with Queen Anne's County Public Schools, I would like to take this opportunity to thank some people. I definitely need to thank all of the staff, administrators, custodians, paras, teachers, superintendents, executive team members, past board members, that I have worked with, past and present. Um, thank you all for what you've done, what you currently do for our students. Um, I, I'm in awe of all of you and, and eternally grateful. I need to thank three people that I feel who have been, who have stepped up every time the district was in need. Mr. Lawrence Dunn, a good friend and a good man. Mr. Richard McNeil, yeah you. <laughs> and last, but certainly not least, Ms. Janet Pauls, who has my undying gratitude for all she did to keep our system working in a time of great need. It has been my honor and privilege to serve Queen Anne's County. I thank you all, and may God bless us. Okay, thank you. Okay, we had the board members, Mr. Toll. Toll, I'm sorry. All right, so uh, October was a very busy month for us. It was very successful. Happy late Halloween for everybody. Uh, so starting today, quarter one ended. Um, so we're moving into the last quarter of the semester. Winter sports orientation is at 5.30 tomorrow afternoon. SAT testing at Queen Anne's County High School is November the 5th. This uh, next week, there'll be the annual canned food drive, which is sponsored by the Future Business Leaders of America. It helps restock food pantries in Queen Anne's County. Uh, this weekend, the Queen Anne's County Band is competing in the Tournament of Bands Atlantic Coast Championships in Hershey, Pennsylvania. Uh, we are closed on Tuesday for Election Day. Uh, electronic report cards are going to be sent home November 11th. Uh, the Queen Anne's County Fall Play this year is Clue with performances on November 11th, 12th, and 19th at 7 p.m. and Sunday, November 20th at 2 p.m. On November 15th, there'll be ASVAB testing for all juniors in English 3 this semester. Another date will be set up for <clears throat> students in English 3 in the spring. Uh, while this is a military test, it is also one of the best career interest tests that matches amplitude and interest. I took it my junior year and I highly recommend any junior take it. Um, that same day, November 15th, winter sports tryouts will begin. Please sign up on form relief. On the 16th, Chesapeake College registration will happen for anybody that is hoping to, any seniors hoping to continue going to Chesapeake College or dual enrollment in the spring. Uh, November 18th, Salisbury University admissions is going to be on site at Queen Anne's County High School. And the 20th, the winter concert jazz band at 7 p.m. and band and choir at 7.30. Additional announcements, we have we will continue to have college visits throughout December, and the Interact Co Club, in conjunction with the Centerville Rotary, are holding interviews for the Rotary Youth Leadership Conference. Interested juniors can sign up in guidance. Uh, moving on to sports, we're not going to talk about football, but <laughs> the uphands that we have on Ken Island. Um, so, volleyball just won. Bay sides the for the girls and our Lady Lions varsity soccer just won regional champions. So right. congratulations to them. Oh, 
Time rebuttal, Mr. Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> I'll start off easy. <laughs> to start off the week for homecoming, seniors attended a sunrise breakfast on October 17th. I want to give a special thanks to the senior class parent group as well as anyone that assisted in organizing the event. Uh, the seniors greatly appreciate, appreciate your efforts. Although the sun wasn't visibly present during the sunrise, a lot of seniors still showed up and they enjoyed everything from donuts and muffins to coffee and orange juice. On October 19th, our band and choir participated in a joint concert themed Night at the Movies. They performed songs themed as Pirates of the Caribbean, as well as a few Disney-inspired Disney songs. Our homecoming dance took place on October 20th. The dance was overall an amazing turnout, and it followed the theme of 25 years of excellence. Our homecoming parade, which took place on October 22nd, also followed this theme. Each float illustrated one year from 1998 to 2022. One of the floats was de designated to the original six of the school who have been teaching at Canal High School for 25 years. Mm. In addition, a few teachers that have retired since teaching at Canal High School came back and participated in the parade. Oh. Following the homecoming parade was the homecoming football game against James and Bennett. Many students and fans came out to support Canal High School in their, in their victory against Bennett during the halftime show. The Canal High School dance team gave a special performance and they performed songs from 1998 up until 2022. In more recent news, on Friday, October 28th, <laughs> Ken Island took on Queen Anne's High School football team at home. It was a very competitive and exciting game. Ken Island came, on, came out on top with a final score of 42 to 14. <laughs> this made our rec this made our record change our record to eight wins and one loss. The game was packed with hundreds of fans coming coming to support both teams. Our student section made a lot of noise and it, as they cheered on their team and the administration team, as I quote, was extremely impressed by their respectful behavior demonstrated by an overwhelming majority of students and fans. During the game, we also had a staff appreciation event. There was a tent with VIP seating where staff could sit and enjoy the game. Shout out to Adams Grove, Ken Island for catering the event. Thanks to them, our staff was able to enjoy an amazing selection of food as they watched our game. All fall sports playoffs games have, have officially begun. Our next field hockey game will take place tomorrow at our stadium with our cross country team participating in a meet at re for regionals at CSD. Our volleyball team will be playing in their first playoff game on Monday and potentially regionals on Wednesday. In other news, full, full dress rehearsals for a midnight summer's dream have begun. The first showing for the, for the performance will be Friday at 7 in the auditorium at Canal High School. There will be four showings for the show over the next two weeks. Please come out with your families and friends to experience some of the talent that we have at Canal High School. We have thus far, I would also like to add, during homecoming week, seniors Seniors won the Spirit Chain event sponsored by DECA, our marketing program. But more importantly, Canal High School students donated $1,020 to the Jacob Sloan Foundation to help serve our community. So nice. In addition, we have thus far collected over 2,200 cans and non-perishables for a school-wide food drive. The food drive will support our food bank at Queenstown as well as a feed of, our Feed a Family organization for Queen Anne's County. All right. Well, Thank you. Very good. Very good. Dr. Salins? Yes, busy, busy, busy time of the year. Um, had a chance to do many of the things, homecoming games and made conferences, but hands down the best is in the classrooms reading to our littles and it's just warms your heart to go in and uh, have a young man who said, you know, that was a really nice story. Thanks for coming in. And I was just like, you can't get any better than that, right? Uh, so, um, so yeah, so that's, I would have to say that's my highlight is getting into classrooms and reading to some of our students. I'm gonna say the times I went with you, the teacher still comes out of yeah. you. It comes out in everybody. Every, I say Marsha and other people, yeah. Dr. Sprinkle. Smith, Dr. Salins, executive team board members, executive team members. It is my, well, I am Marcia Sprankle, for the record, the assistant superintendent. So it is my pleasure to present tonight the October Spotlight for Queen Anne's County Public Schools. So I am excited about that this evening. We had a lot happening last month, but we're going to start off with Bayside Elementary School. Bayside Elementary School celebrated Grandparents and Special Friends Day last month. 
As you can imagine, this is the first time they've been back together since COVID-19, the closing of schools. So they were thrilled to pieces. I will tell you, grandparents had an opportunity to read to their grandchildren. They also had an opportunity to tell what school was like, elementary school was like when they went to school. They also played a game of Kahoot with their grandchild. So it was just a wonderful experience. As you can imagine, base, uh, the elementary school had a full house. So we are just excited for our grandparents to be back in our buildings. Um, this is um, not unique just to Bayside Elementary School. We had several other schools who had Grandparents Day as well. So it was just, it's just an exciting time to have our grandparents back. And now for Churchill Elementary School. On October 13th, Churchill Elementary School's volunteer had the volunteer uh, fire department and their amazing PTA sponsor, Flash, uh, Flash Max, a firefighter, comic superhero character that helps spread the home fire safety message to students and families. The fire department brought the big fire trucks and students had a chance to touch, go and take a look at what it looks like inside a real fire truck. And so I will tell you, Churchill Elementary School is grateful to have that partnership with the fire department. And we wanna thank our PTA over at Churchill Elementary School as well. And now for Settlersville Elementary School. Settlersville Elementary School celebrated Hispanic Heritage Month with their families. I will tell you, it was a wonderful event that was planned uh, with their PTA, as well as the Queen Anne's County Public Schools Migrant Recruitment Office. It was a huge success, according to um, Mrs. McNeil, the principal at Settlersville Elementary Schools. Families brought in special cuisines, Hispanic cuisines for the staff to sample, and they had a delightful lunch. So that was a special event for Settlersville Elementary School. And now Centerville Middle School. Centerville Middle School has been busy. Their, grant, their band students are progressing and practicing for the Christmas parade that's coming up that will be in Centerville on December the 2nd at 6.30. They're doing a wonderful job. I had a chance to visit band several times and I'm just excited for the progress that they're making. Can't wait to see them performing um, in the coming weeks for their concerts as well as the parade that will take place down in town. Queen Anne's um, County High School dancers volunteer their time to, to give one, a wonderful performance of folk themed dances at the Cassia Vineyard on Ken Island during a Carol Casino, uh, Cassio, excuse me, celebration of life event last month. They perform the Virginia Reel as well as the Irish folk dance. This event took place to celebrate her contributions to the community and raise awareness for the newly formed foundation in her name for Mind Movement Dance Connections. Mrs. Cassio passed away on October 17th in 2021. And now last month, I think uh, Ms. Bent referred to this. We had a big celebration at Settlersville Middle School. We had a ribbon cutting ceremony and we had community members there, health department officials there, Chop Tank community health representatives were there. President Smith attended, Mrs. Bennett, Ms. Bent, and of course, Dr. Salins, and the Queen Anne's County Public Schools leadership team throughout the county. So we had a large representation there last month and I will tell you this was just a big celebration because we actually have three school-based health centers along with dental services as well at Settlersville Elementary School and also Churchill Elementary School and Settlersville Middle School of course. So those are the celebrations for the month of October. Thank you so much. Thank you. Next, we'll have citizen participation, public comment. 
We ask all speakers to keep in mind the following guidelines. Speakers should sign the roster, including their telephone number and address. Comments should be limited three minutes in length. Comments longer than three minutes should be submitted in writing. Questions or statements to the board should relate to a matter of general policy over which the, the board has authority. Comments about actions or statements of individual staff members are not appropriate for public comment and should be referred to the superintendent of schools or board president. If you have a specific question, the board will make sure the appropriate staff member responds to your question. The board respects your desire <clears throat> and right to convey your message freely, but ask as a courtesy to this board and our citizens to show respect for all. First name on the list, David Stricker. all day to get this under three minutes, so I'm going to try. <laughs> Good evening. Uh, my name is. Oh wait, I gotta say where I live. Uh, uh, my name is David Stricker. I live at. Uh, for those who want to toilet paper, my house later. Uh, at <laughs> One four nine Graner Ave, uh, Centerville, Maryland. Um, as I said, I'm David Stricker. Uh, I have the honor of being the head wrestling coach at Queen Anne's County High School. Um, come to you with kind of good news and kind of an ask at the end because I know maybe sometimes you get a lot of complaining in here, but I promise it's good news. Um, I'm here because of these two amazing young ladies and our third one, uh, Allie, that took the leap of faith last year and helped found the Queen Anne's County wrestling team. Uh, they put the faith in us as coaches in the sport and in themselves and joined the fastest growing collegiate sport uh, in the United States. Um, it's the biggest sport growing. There are 17 women's programs in our surrounding states, Pennsylvania, West Virginia, Virginia, North Carolina, and South Carolina. There are schools just willing to give away money with anyone uh, with experience. Um, they've inspired an increase in female wrestlers in our youth program. And three weeks after the state tournament, my three-year-old daughter turned to us during lunch and said, I want to be a state champion. You, can you find me a place to wrestle? Um, so with this, uh, at Queen Anne's County High School, we're going to be hosting one of the only two standalone all-girl tournaments this year uh, during the season at Queen Anne's County High School. And hopefully next year, I'm in contact with a couple other teams that have large numbers, be one of the first teams to hold an actual women's duel uh, in the state of Maryland next year. Uh, that's the plan for next year. Uh, all this comes from the amazing recruiting that they've done this year. Uh, I was expecting maybe six, our returning three and three others. Uh, but it's looking like we could potentially have 10 to 15 uh, female wrestlers this year. Nice. Uh, with that being said, here's my ask. Uh, sort of surrounding counties, I know if they have six female wrestlers, they create a paid uh, position for the women's wrestling team. Uh, if we have 10 or 15 this year, we can survive this year. Uh, but next year, I just ask, please put in a paid uh, head women's wrestling coach position. Uh, I've already talked with my principal uh, and our athletic director to hopefully put it in the budget for next year. So hopefully Mr. Pinder uh, gets that note uh, from them. Uh, I've been a teacher in this county. I teach Spanish at Queen Anne's County uh, for 16 years. Uh, so I know money is, money is tight. I know budgets are what they are. Um, I have no problem coming back, you know, if we want to work out logistics officially and talk about it. Uh, we do have matches on Wednesdays, so I don't have a free Wednesday starting until about February. Um, but I'm, feel free to come back and talk with you about it. Um, you know, to talk logistics, uh, as I said, it's 16 years in, I'm a three-year-old, uh, I've got 11 years to fill the full team. Um, so <laughs> that way I have all 14 weight classes filled by the time she gets here. Um, and like I said, I'm 16 years in, so I got 24 years uh, left in the county before I retire uh, to make women's wrestling uh, a norm, in, at least at Queen Anne's County High School, and not a novelty. So. 
congratulations. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Why well, you got a couple seconds that? more? I, when, oh, sure. When, when is your turn? When you having a? When's that tournament going to come? Can you want to put it say out so people know when it is? Yeah, I mean, I was going to send out the flyers to the Blue Jays coaches and stuff uh, this week, but uh, January 28th is the Queen of the Jungle tournament at Queen Anne's Hi. County High School. Um, they'll hopefully they'll go to two weeks before, oh, three weeks before that. They'll go to the Who's Number One tournament at Northeast in Anne Arundel. Uh, and then we have ours, and I mean, there's other girls tournaments that run at the, but they're running at the same time as other JV tournaments and things that, um, kind of in my mind, that they're throwing the girls tournament on as an afterthought and not giving them the respect and the, the you know, just kind of the spotlight that they deserve. So thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Good luck, girls. Thank you. Hopefully, we bring home more than one state champion. There you go. There you go. There you go. Next, Mr. Richard McNeil. Awesome. I don't know. That's a tough act to follow. Yes. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. My name is Richard McNeil, and uh, tonight I'm representing myself, but also representing the uh, Retired uh, School Personnel uh, Association. Um, just to bring you up to date, our, at our, we had our luncheon on October and we had the guests of, of, of the superintendent and assistant superintendent and Tammy was, joined us on that. And um, one of our community outreach was working with uh, Michelle uh, in the health department. Uh, we collected uh, 33 cases of water, uh, of which we donated two of those cases to each of the nurses stations and all throughout the county so every school got at least that much i know it wasn't much but two cases of water goes a long way with uh for the nurses to help them out and that's we were happy to do that uh, after lunch we had a field trip and several of our members went to the hope school the one room schoolhouse out in in there and uh it's it, it, again it's surprising how many people haven't been there and we are our goal is to really uh, advertise that more so that next spring when we open it up again we can get some folks in there and um, maybe even open it up to the elementary schools i know they tour some of the uh, historical buildings in town we'd like to extend that out to to that possibility um, I think the young folks would be enjoying how schools were back in the 1890s and, and the early uh, 1900, and uh, it's set up for that. Um, I'd like to say to the schools, good luck with the playoffs. Um, I go to almost all the football games and a lot of the volleyball games and so forth, but football is, I haven't missed too many of them in my, my tenure here. Um, our association also would like to, again, thank Tammy. Sorry, been a great relationship and we like you. Thank you for what you've done for our students and staff and just your dedication to help the schools and in the county. I apologize for that, but uh, anyway, uh, take care. Thank you. I didn't go over my bed. <laughs> There's no one else on the list. Do you have anybody else in the audience would like to speak? Okay. Thank you. Our next will be informational items. Uh, Citizens Advisory Council, Dr. Kibler. Good evening, President Smith. Dr. Salins, board members and executive team, uh, Dr. Matthew Kibler, Director of Accountability and Implementation. I'm here tonight just to give an update on the Citizens Advisory Council and the School System Improvement Committee. Um, so we had our first meeting a few weeks ago on Wednesday, October 12th. Uh, really great turnout. Um, everybody that had volunteered their time actually showed up for the first meeting. It was really exciting to see. Um, excited group, eager to be there, very engaged, ready to help. Um, sort of wanted just to outline a little bit what we talked about the first meeting and kind of where we're headed the next couple meetings as well. The first meeting we talked a little bit about uh, 
the purpose and role of that group. <clears throat> Talked about two-way communication, you all having the opportunity to share with them things that you'd like their input on, as well as them bringing to us some topics that are important that they'd like maybe some more information about to get that dialogue. So we really talked about two-way uh, communication. Also talked a little bit about their roles um, at representing schools in the community and making sure that they understood that there was a little responsibility as we sort of explain some decisions and things to them, talk about the budgeting process, that they sort of filter that information back out in their school communities as well, whether that be the PTA, um, and just other ways um, that they might see fit. We talked about some of the future meeting topics, which are in sort of outlined in the policy and regulation. Talked about the organi organizational structure of the district, just kind of how we run, because we know some of them uh, are kind of new to that. Talked about uh, the strategic plan, the new strategic plan we rolled out, the five-year plan, and how they can help with that sort of tracking progress over the next five years. And then talked about uh, the blueprint for Maryland's future as well, and how that's gonna guide public education in the state of Maryland for the next 10 years or so. It really felt uh, informative, this first meeting. Uh, we, we were very, I was very transparent about that, that we kind of wanted to sort of make sure they understood, you know, what you all were thinking for that group, um, sort of ways that, you know, the district operates, some of the big projects we have for this, this coming year and years in the future. Um, next meeting is next Wednesday, actually, November 9th. We'll start working on the school calendar with them and um, getting input. So really talking about, you know, if, uh, just all the parameters we have to operate um, under the school calendar. There's really not as much flexibility as some people might, might think, but just outline those parameters, talk about what they like, what they don't like, and that'll be a month or two process. Um, in December, we, I've asked Ms. Towers to attend so they, she can start outlining a little bit about the budgeting process as well. So those are some of the things we were thinking as well as getting input from you all for agenda items and, and allowing some open dialogue there as well. We did set uh, spring meeting dates for the fourth Wednesday of the month um, in January, February, and April to get our six meetings in for the year as outlined in the policy. And that's kind of our update right now. Happy to answer any questions, any topics you'd like discussed next week or, or for the rest of the year as we sort of set agendas and facilitate those meetings. You have a set number of people in that meeting, in that on that committee? Yes, we have one representative from um, um, each school and then a representative from board members as well. Just wondering if you were looking for any other community involvement or anything. I think right now we're pretty set, but I wouldn't mind, I mean, if there's somebody you know that's that's itching, I can have a list of names, and if somebody has to rotate out for some reason, that would be, you know. Okay. I got one nice compliment that you ran the meeting efficiently and stopped it promptly at 730. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just know one and a lot of appreciate when they're volunteering their time to have it run efficiently right. and know that, you know, we're not going to be here till nine or 10 o'clock. Right. Uh, I think, I think that's very important because you have a window, you got an agenda and it gets things done. I think people feel a lot better doing something like that. Thank you. And it, we will definitely, I, I definitely want to try to stick to agendas, allow them to ask about some topics to sort of fill that agenda too. But I, I think that does keep us on track and, and keep the conversation focused, but there is time for that sort of open dialogue back and forth too. And with me sort of being the only system a staff member there, I'm not going to be able to answer every question, every meeting. I, it might take some time to, to sort of gather info to get back to them. And also, if you're only one, they can speak freely too. <laughs> I mean, it's I mean, it's different than I know. Dr. Sandler or somebody. Sir. Correct. Not that they would say something to yeah, you, but, but they I, think sometimes I think it's good to get a good cross section of our community to get that input because that's it's good for this board to hear that. And mm -hmm. if we have questions and issues, we can send them that way. And if they have them, they can you know make some. I think that's a it's sure. A, we're all they were even together. They even brought up too, like how they can sort of talk amongst themselves if they want to in between meetings. So one thing I'm setting up for them is Schoology, which is the course management system we use for our students in the schools to access their, their courses and materials online. We're gonna set up a course uh, for these groups as well with a discussion board. So if they wanna pose questions, 
meeting to meeting, that's fine. I'm going to try to stay out of that. I can help with it technically. Um, you know, I want to try to stick to my communication for these organized meetings. But, um, but yeah, I plan to just sort of come back and give these sort of short updates. I did tell them if we ever get to the point where we're talking about something sort of controversial or anything like that, something you really want to know, I might ask one of them to come and sit and sort of speak on the group's behalf if I'm if I'm worried about how it might be perceived me me relaying the message or whatever. And everybody pretty understood that and just really excited and eager. And I appreciate them if they're, if they're watching now. Appreciate them um, joining. Mm. Any other board members? No, thank you to everyone who volunteered. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Mrs. Towers. Good evening, President Smith, Dr. Salins, board members, executive team. My name is Jean Towers. I'm the CFO here for Queen Anne's County Public Schools. Tonight we bring before you the expenditure status reports for the month ending October for your review. Thank you. One question I have is on the uh, O2, which is sizable. But I uh, think it's 5.5 .5 million uh, mid-level administration. We're a little bit over. Is that just contractual or out? It, it is. Um, we'll be bringing a budget amendment in November. This is actually a couple things. This is the um, retro salaries that will be in place that we'll bring before you that we'll have to utilize fund balance for. In addition to after the budget, there is some positions that change. Um, most notably would be the teacher specialist moving to the AP roles. I know we discussed because we did our budget last year and we have our teachers contract we're honoring um, that uh, assuming there might be some movement there too in some of these categories correct yes yes December will look different right any other board members okay we'll do that one Think I'm up next for the next one? Yes. All right. you are. Keep on running. All right, we'll keep going. ESSER 2 and ESSER 3 uh, is presented for your review. Uh, just a couple of items of note. ESSER 2 really focus on social distancing and battling COVID. There are some funds available under the cleaning supplies. Under ESSER 2, ESSER 3, its purpose was really to identify learning loss. So you can see that um, those expenditures there as well. Have we, like things that we ordered when we ramped down from COVID, have we sent some of that stuff back or was it just kind of tough to do or? I'm thinking like masks, we don't use masks anymore. And there's no oh, need. I'll let um, Mr. Fender answer that since from operations. We, we still do supply some masks to okay. schools. Uh, I mean, if somebody choices. wants to wear one. Um, a lot of hand sanitizer, still cleaning supplies. Um, and we don't want to deplete it down too much just in case something goes backwards right now. But I mean, our usage has, has, has gone down, it's except gone for down. those three items. And that triple threat too now from what I'm hearing. Uh, right. uh, yeah. It's yeah. Still sanitizing or we're still We've yes, we've cut we used to bring in with the ESSER and money we were able to bring in custodians extra during the daytime. Right. That funding has dried up, but at nighttime, um, actually we were just working on what Mr. Moore said about, you know, with the uh, R S V and everything going on, you know, sanitizing and um, using the Mr. Machines also, okay. getting that going on. And you still have normal flu season that we've had mm -hmm. our whole lifetime. So a lot of the products that we got, I mean, we still can use. I mean, it wasn't just a one-time thing. Any other questions by the board? No. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Towers. Our next uh, will be action items. You had a chance to review the human resource report submitted to us. Mr. Smith, may I make a motion to accept the human resource and substitute bus driver report as reported in closed session? Second. No motion, second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Ayes have it. <clears throat> okay, our next thing will be Greer 2 grant. Michael Page.
Good evening, President Smith, Dr. Salens, board members, executive team. For the record, my name is Michael Page. I am curriculum supervisor. I'm Carla Pullen, facilities planner. Tonight we bring to you um, the Gears 2 Grant Initiative 3, the outdoor exploration. Uh, the purpose of this is the approval of the contract between Queen Anne's County Public Schools Oak Contracting LLC to provide services and to conduct all site and foundation work, construction and pavilion structures and provide electrical work for the outdoor educational classrooms at all eight Queen Anne's County public schools, elementary school sites. Uh, for the statement in regards to this, uh, in 2021, Queen Anne's County Public Schools was awarded the Governor's Emergency Educational Relief Funds. And uh, this is by uh, Larry Hogan, and it utilizes a competitive, we utilize a competitive grant. Oak Construction LLC provided the lowest and most complete bid for the project based on the bid specifications. This contract is contingent on the approval to the to reallocate funding for the gears to grant we are asking you tonight to uh, the superintendent recommends that the board uh, um, approval of the contract between Queen Anne's County Public Schools and Oaks Contracting LLC in the amount of five hundred seven seven thousand six hundred and fifty nine dollars to provide services to conduct all site and foundation work construction and pavilion structures and provide the electrical work and the outside classrooms outdoor classrooms uh, at each of the eight elementary schools i see a very little difference in the cost of each one of them but there's a few thousand dollars that's grading or Slight, site distance or something like that? Correct. Depending on where the site was located, um, we had to, uh, you know, some of it, a lot of it was the electrical um, work to to um, pull the electric out to those sites. Just roughly what size are they? I mean, it's one in classroom. I guess it's enough to house 22 students. About a 20 by 30. Right. Now, will there be benches or tables or pick? What are we doing for the... Right, so we are looking at the convertible bench seating versus in, that converts into a bench with a table. Okay, is that's not in here? That is not in here, but that is allocated in the Gears 2 funds. This is strictly for the construction of the facility. Yes, sir. Nice. Ms. Hogan, no, this is going to make a motion. Okay. Mr. President, I, uh, regarding the Gear 2 Grant Initiative 3 Outdoor Exploration, I move to accept, approve the contract between Queen Anne's County Public Schools and Oak Contracting to provide services to conduct all site and foundation work, construct the pavilion structures, and provide the electrical work for the outdoor educational classrooms at each of the eight Queen Anne's County elementary school sites in the amount of $507,659 on budget source grant Governor's Emergency Education Relief 2 funds. Thanks. A motion and a second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Very good. Thank you so we much. Haven't we haven't seen you for a while. Nice to meet you. I know. We're, we're, we're excited to get this moving along. So okay, thank We appreciate you all. your patience with it and keep you know, your perseverance, I should say. <laughs> yes. Have a good night. Our chiller replacement, uh, Ms. Paulum. Yes. So I'm here this evening to request your approval on a contract with JCI to replace the chiller and the associated components at Sellersville Elementary School. We will be utilizing cooperative purchasing for this contract. We will be doing a new 250 ton air chilled, air cooled chiller. Um, that will include wiring, piping, valves, the breakers, and we're actually going to be correcting the piping arrangement on the dual temperature loop. We hope that that's going to see some greater efficiency for us with that building. The contract price is $351,920. We are asking for a 5% contingency on that for any unforeseen conditions for a total amount of $369,516. Um, I had one question. It says sure. it's approval is contingent on reallocating funds from the county. From yes. Okay. Yes. So we did ask the county to allot some money that was left over from one of our other projects to this one because it did come in over budget. And I understand that that happened at their meeting last Tuesday. Okay. Great. Thanks. And it's probably not apples and apples, but one time we did something and we did had to come back with a new control system. This one's set up the way we want to have it set up for not the 
time. Yes. The first time around. Yeah. Yes. The other one was a complete. That's right. I figured it wouldn't happen that way. Yes. But this this, this will tie into the existing control system. system. And, and be compatible yes. with, with our whole other system and how we do things. Yes, it's a JCI system, so we'll be working with JCI to do that. The new piping arrangements because the building is old. The new piping was installed incorrectly when they was renovated. So this will tremendously... It actually goes in reverse of what it should. Oh, wow. And so the water flow is in reverse and it works, but it's probably taxing that chiller and probably using way more energy than we ever realized. And so we hope that we'll see some savings from this as well by correcting it. Wow. How long was the, this other one in? Uh, During the winter time. Oh, it just... No, oh, but when did we put this in? It was the how end long end is this the, the one we're replacing? It had to be. We're over 20 years oh. on this. Um, so we have no recall. We have no recall. We have no recall on the previous. No. no, no. I mean, you never do, but I mean, it's Remodeling just... was in 20... 2001? The beginning of... Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, late 90s, like early 2000s. Huh? When did we realize it was... Backwards. Backwards. Not until we brought we in the team to take a look at this and to make sure that we were putting the new chiller and they said something is not really working well here. And when they really got down to the bottom of it, they said that's what's happening. Let's correct this and, and see how much better we do. So we're excited to see some of the savings. Do we? I don't know what it would cost. Do we ever have somebody come and look at our systems and say, is everything I'm right. running the way they're supposed yeah, to? We, we do. Uh, we have bowling. But until you actually got into this and, like, took it apart, okay. there's really no way to tell which way it was you going. Know, going. Um, and it wasn't until they, they got involved in that yet. But our, our chillers are serviced um, by a company called Bowling year-round. Um, is something we've inherited so but it, it will be we're correct. entering into a relationship with stone logistic which um provides an energy management person that will go um, and work with carla to go building to building to look at all of our systems see the efficiencies of them and see where we can um, reduce costs overall and um, increase productivity of course you're saying that wouldn't have found that though we, we only found that because we had somebody else find the, to look at the chiller stuff until you, okay. until you start taking the valves and all apart Yep. We have to look at that company. We don't want them to do another chiller. <laughs> Twenty years from now, uh -huh. well, Twenty years from now, what's what else can do that? Well, no, we just well, oh, you, huh? You don't think they have records of who put it in? They don't have their little name on the side of the chiller. You know how they put the little stickers, <laughs> right? That's a war. Thank you. Right. <laughs> okay. Any other questions? Mr. Smith, I make a motion to approve the contract with JCI Simplex to replace the chiller and associated co components at Sellersville Elementary School. Uh, fiscal impact dollar amount of three hundred sixty-nine thousand five hundred sixteen dollars. Budget source FY 2023 state funding capital of one hundred fifty-three thousand, and FY 2021 capital. County capital funding of two hundred sixteen thousand five hundred sixteen dollars. Second. And the county has approved this. Uh, it's my understanding, this. yes, that Those it went before them at the meeting okay. last Tuesday. All those members say aye. Aye. Ayes have it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we have a AMN Healthcare. Mrs. Smith. Yes. Good evening, President Smith, Dr. Salins, board members, members of the executive team. For the record, my name is Jolene Smith, Supervisor of Special Education for Queen Anne's County Public Schools. I bring before you this evening a contract for um, a school psychologist for from AMN Healthcare Incorporated. This is a in-person school psychologist who will be providing five days of service to our northern schools, Sudlersville Elementary, Sudlersville Middle, Middle and Churchill Elementary School. Uh, this position is filling a vacant position that became vacant at the end of the school year last year, so it is just filling that position uh, temporarily until we can secure a direct hire. Uh, the amount requested is $108,000, and that would be coming from the FY23 unrestricted operating budget. Any questions by the board? And this just seems to be an ongoing position that's hard to fill. Correct. They are very hard to, to come by. Um, and actually, again, I think I mentioned this before, since COVID, um, 
there's a, a very large push to provide services virtually, so it's even harder to find those that are, are willing, willing to come in the schools. So we're extremely lucky and in this case. If I understand it right, this is a replacing the contract that fell through that was telework, and so this is even better because we've got some in person, and it's less money. I know. Uh, so well, it's a, a shorter way. time frame just because it's a month less. So. Okay. But I think we always got to remember too when we see 108 on here, that's with no benefits. Mm -hmm. Well, it is with benefits, but we're not responsible for the benefits, so we're kind of encumbering the cost of the benefits for the contract agency. So they're paying the salary and any benefits that the the contractor would. But the 108 includes that. Mm -hmm. Correct, and it's not they're not our benefits. That's what I mean. So if we took, had that position, we'd look at twenty twenty five thousand dollars possibly worth of benefits. It is a comparable right. right. And taxes. Yes. yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Mr. Anything else? I was no. make Anybody else? Mr. Yeah. President, I move for the, regarding the contract approval for AMN Healthcare Incorporated for school psychologists that we approve that contract with AMN Healthcare for school psychology services to temporarily fill a vacant full-time equivalent position in the amount of $108,000 with budget fiscal year 23 unrestricted operating budget. Second. I have a motion to second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Ayes have it. Thank you. And thank you, Ms. Harper, for your service. Uh, thank you. Have a good evening. You too. Uh, Mrs. Towers. <laughs> good evening once again. I'd like to introduce you to uh, one of the auditors that we had on our fiscal audit for this year, Ms. Audrey McKendrick. She comes to us through UHY, which is a different company named than we're used to. It, uh, in the past, it was TGM, which they merged with UHY. So she's going to uh, go through the financial statements, and then we'll be ready to answer any questions that you might have. Good evening. Thank you for having me. Um, just to give you some background on the audit, we start the audit typically in May. We come out for about a week and work with Jane to kind of go over processes so we get an idea of how everything's working, if there's any changes. Then we come back usually at end of August into September and spend about two or three weeks doing the actual testing. We leave, wrap everything up, and then submit. The, the audit has to be completed by September 30th to submit to MSDE. So I am going to start on page three, page number, and it's numbered page three at the bottom, which is actually our audit report. And the second paragraph in that audit report is our opinion, which is probably the most critical piece of all of this. And that, that paragraph starts out, in our opinion, the financial statements referred to above present fairly in all material respects. It goes on from there, but what that means, it's a clean opinion. We did not find any issues that we needed to bring to your attention. It's the highest opinion that we we can give on an audit. The format of the audit report is slightly different this year, um, but essentially the same information. The next paragraph just talks about what the basis for our opinion is. And I will draw to your attention, there's an emphasis of matter paragraph this year, which only occurs because as new government accounting standards are implemented, we have to put an emphasis of matter paragraph in here that you have implemented those in a timely fashion. This year's was GASB 87, which was a re surrounded leases, and it did not impact your financial statements at all. The rest of the report goes on to re talk to res responsibilities of management and then our responsibility as auditors. If we turn to page six, the second report is our independent <coughs> auditor's report on internal control. Um, and that's basically where we come out and look at processes and just try to see, is there anything going on that we need to bring to your attention that would cause us to have concerns? And we found no material weaknesses that needed to be presented to you. And that's what this report states. The next section of the report is the management discussion and analysis, and that is management's opportunity to kind of condense all the information in here into several pages to make it easier to read rather than all the details of the financials. The next page we'll go to is page 18, 
which is the first set of statements that are presented. And I'm just gonna go over these really quickly. This the first statement is the statement of net position on page 18, and then page 19 is the statement of activities. This is essentially a balance sheet and income statement as you would see for a business, it's full accrual basis. You typically, because you're more concerned about the cash and what your expenditures are, you're not too worried about these statements. This will show fixed assets and long-term liabilities, but it's not based on the cash needs that are required. If anybody has questions on these, I'd be happy to answer that. Um, but I will draw your attention to page 20, which is more in line with how cash is actually kind of going out the door, so to speak. And I think the most important things to note here are your, if in the total governmental governmental funds column, cash in total is around 19 million. And then we also list receivables that are due into you, liabilities that you have. And then the section at the bottom is your fund balance. And total fund balance for the year for all your governmental funds is it sitting at approximately $11 million. And that's broken down into different categories. And some of that I believe was kind of discussed tonight when you were going over the expenditures for October. But you have restricted expenditures related to food service in your fund balance. You have committed, which is when you were talking about the commitments for salary and also for equipment and maintenance assigned, which is a lot of your encumbrances, and then your unassigned fund, fund balance, which is, which is sitting at about $3 million. If you will turn to page 22, it's your statement of revenues, expenditures, and change in fund balance. And this is just kind of how, what happens, what revenues come in and what expenditures go out to drive that fund balance up or down during the year. And your total revenues this year are sitting at about 125 million. That is a $6 million increase over the prior year. And the biggest portion of that is related to your restricted revenues that come in, which a lot of that is related to the COVID funding that you're receiving that was spoken to earlier. And then again on expenditures, you'll see for the year total expenditures for the year about 123.5, and that's about an $8 million increase. And again, the largest piece of that is being driven by the restricted expenditures are recurring, occurring related to those grants. The next statement is the statement of fiduciary net position, which is on page 24, and that really just shows what's been put aside for OPEB, and then you do have some custodial funds where your finance department is providing bookkeeping services, I'll say, for another organization, so it's really not your assets. The next biggest section from about 20, page 28 to page 50 is the notes to the financial statements. There are no significant changes in those this year. The numbers will change, but as far as the wording and what those are, the information being provided, they're pretty much the same as last year. So if no one has any questions on that, I will jump straight to the back to page 52 which is the schedule of revenues, expenditures, and encumbrances. And what this will show you is the cash that was expended during the year, and it also shows those obligations, those encumbrances, what was encumbered that you've basically made a commitment to expend on. And you will see total revenues, the final budget was about 121 million, actual revenues were at about 114 million. So actual revenues came in about 7 million lower than what was budgeted. And again, that's strictly related to those grants for the most part, where you're going ahead as you get those grants, including them in the budget, but not spending the money yet. And that will be spent in future years. Same thing really we see in expenditures. Total expenditures were budgeted at about 123 million. Actual was 114 for a difference of about 8 million where you expended less than you budgeted. So overall at the end of the day, revenues exceeded expenditures by about 1.3 million when we include those encumbrances. And the rest of the report is a lot of additional information on pensions and other post-employment benefits. I would be happy to discuss any of that or we can wrap it up there. So, unless Jay, if you want to add something. No, you've, you've done a nice summary of everything. I would just say I want to thank Jane and her group because they make our they make my job easy. They do all the hard work, mm -hmm. and we just come in and look at it behind you. So thank you very much. Thank you too. I know there's laws about funding pensions. Are we pretty much where we're supposed to be with 
So the pensions, your pay as you go with both pensions and OPEB for the most part. Okay. Government accounting standard just requires that we put, because if you'll look at the OPEB liability, it's huge. huge. But you, you're really pay as you go. It's just required that we put it on there. So yes, like, you are like up a, to date and paying what you should. The figure looks big sometimes, but it's as we go, it's it's projected out. Not it's projected out based on current employees and their retirement dates. And there's they hire actuaries to come in and come up sure with these numbers, and we have to report them in here. But yes, you have you pay as you go, and you are current on all of those items. And, and you're just you're just the auditor, but we still have an issue with fuel and stuff this year. It just scares me. It does. With, you know, we we see a million dollars, million three or something, but okay. you know, when we start looking at our fuel cost of what I see through the winter, just our buses, right. not counting our heating and air, air heating, um, there's going to be some issues we're going to have to address. Definitely. And and I can tell you, I've done some presentations at other locations. Everyone is concerned about that as well. You're not alone in that concern as they're seeing what what that's kind of looking like for this year with everything that's going on mm -hmm. in our economy. It's so. going to fa I mean, you know, when you budget a year ago, almost a year ago, when we put a budget together, it's with, with the way numbers are going, it's just blowing right. out of the work. Yep. So, Mr. Smith, do we make a motion to accept the reports Is that we're doing at this time? Yes. yes. We need independent audit report FY22. So moved. Second. Uh, motion is second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Ayes have it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, moving on. I think I'm here again. Yes, you are. I'm excited to bring this action item before you tonight. This is actually the implementation of our of our possible new time and attendance system if approved. This is a power school partnership with Time Clock Plus for a new attendance system for Queen Anne's County Public Schools. If we can just take a um, brief look at what we our current process. When I came a couple years ago, I heard about the dreaded AVP Monday, which AVP Monday is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Um, so, and it basically is a process to take the information that is in AVP and transferring it down into a readable format to upload it into our accounting software. This is a um, grueling process with a lot of different layers of complication in there. Um, ADP, we're finding that it's not really educationally based in what the school system would need. So if you can imagine in the in a dream world, which is hopefully soon to be a reality, leaf slips being paperless, uh, actually ADP Monday not being uh, the dreaded um, word, you know, of the time. So. Um, we're fortunate to have this in the LEADS grant that if, if approved, we would utilize that funding for the implementation. If you uh, look here, ADP currently costs us 145000 a year. With this new system, with Time Clock Plus, we'll see a fit around 58000 so less than so, half. So savings. you're talking that this, this, this <clears throat> software here will automatically integrate, it will, will put out its own? It, Detail, I'll, labor report, I mean, your payroll. Right. Um, currently, they're having to transfer it. Y yes, it, they have a partnership with PowerSchool, so it's not a PowerSchool project product, but they um, talk to each other better as far as the accounting system, the accounting system with the time and attendance. Currently, our, our, our absent reports, Dr. Stanley can speak to this, as far as just to even pull out a simple absentee list report is very difficult in the current system that we use. This one would be instantaneous. There's actually different dashboards that we can pull up and take a look. There's different parameters that we can uh, address too as far as um, if there 
we want to take a look at how many people are off and if it's going to cause a shortage in the schools because envision a supervisor can see a calendar and every leave that is approved it'll show on that calendar so if another request comes in they can say oh we could run into a problem here if I approve this one because I already have eight already scheduled for that one day so it's basically using current technology where we're, we're currently we're probably 10 years behind technology at least at so this least. is going to save you a lot of time and make it yes, yes as far as efficiency as well as right. it's it, i'm so excited <laughs> are there also checks and balances too to make sure that you're not overpaying or underpaying people i mean it yes. gives you a red flag if somebody has too much overtime or okay exactly that, that's the best kind of system to have to give you heads up so the, the goal would be to, once this um, hopefully is approved tonight, that we would uh, start right away next week with the implementation process and, and set some um, timelines. We are um, very fortunate enough and I'm going to recognize Ms. Jones in the audience. She actually is a, a system administrator that's retired from another district that knows our accounting software inside out and then bringing in time clock plus. We're hoping that this is a huge project to, and that this is going to be a seamless transition for our employees. Are you going to have to be able to use the same hardware you have now? No, we will have to actually have um, new hardware installed. This hardware um, will have actually have a camera. So um, oh, when you swipe, that we can see it's you swiping. Wow, it's and that's really what exciting. The extra money is for up front. It, yeah. it, exactly, for that part of the implementation cost. Just there. like when you go to the bank yeah. or whatever, they can actually see and timestamp your face and your swipe at the same time. So, so every more, school will have the yeah. every yeah. school. What time, how long is it going to take to get it into each of the schools? Um, we, we're we're still working out the timeline as far as getting in schools. One thing that we really want to be cognizant of is that uh, we're not going to tie ourselves to a, a specific timeline. We want to make sure that we roll it out in different phases and maybe even start with central office to start and then maybe some test schools. One thing that is included in this is actually on-site training from Time Clock Plus so they get the, each school gets to talk to the experts and have them available too as well for training instead of just a um, us going in, bringing it in there, and then leaving them. Exactly. Like to provide that support. Maybe you'll be the expert. She's so excited. <laughs> I, I, excited I'm, for you. It, it really is exciting, and I can't thank Suzanne enough. Do we do we have a contract and help us out with this? She's amazing. Do we still have a contract with ADP? I mean, when is it up? We are going month to month. Okay. Um, and that was because we were looking strategically ahead and talking with Dr. Salen. She was like, "That's another reason why that's so high." Yes, it's because it's month to month, month to month currently. Okay. One of the questions I've asked for years is attendance. Yeah. Because, and I know Dr. Salem's probably gets tired of listening to me. I know you do. No. And you know, I, I, I hear people aren't there, and I know everybody's got reasons for not to be there. But we need the teachers in the classroom, and you know, and then I say our substitute calls. Or what they're costing us you know we're paying to substitute and i just think this is great to see where we have issues can move things around better manage manage things because to me it i've been very frustrated asking questions as far as not getting and it's not that i didn't get a good answer there wasn't the answer to give because i don't think our system and for this kind of system we have with a, what 1100 1200 employees yes to me it's well overdue i think it could benefit everybody yeah. Well, that's kind of how it got started that um, Mr. Smith asked me for an attendance report for a specific school. And so I would just assumed like I would go down to HR and just say, hey, can you just run me this report? You know, the president's asking for it. And they're like, oh, yeah, we we don't have the capacity to do that. I said, you, you don't have the capacity to tell me, you know, what attendance is at each school? And no. And I went to Jane and I went to team. I said, what, what are we going to do? Like, we got to do something to fix this. So that kind of started the ball rolling and then happened upon this product that really seems like it will meet every need that we have um, just on the highest end of technologies and moving forward and, be and, save us, and save us money. It'll do everything. As we have a new contract, everybody knows we have some parameters on, on personal leave. And so this will be able to, for us to be able to cap it out automatically at that 5% and, um, you know, send out notifications 
notifications to people, hey, you requested a personal day, but the cap's there, so you're gonna have to pick a different day, that type of thing. Um, so I really know it's gonna meet our needs. It's just, we wanna do slow and steady so that we do it right. Um, and you know, we just we just wanna make sure that we get it right the first time. We don't, we don't wanna misstep because it's a big thing. So just like any other, when you're moving, you know, your scheduling system or something for your payroll, it's, it's just a big deal. So we wanna make sure we do it right. So just ask you as a, about accounting practices. Uh, we pay our own quarterly taxes. ADP doesn't do that for for us. Yeah. Okay, so we keep that money in house, and we and your the finance department pays it when it's okay. Correct. So because this is because this time clock plus definitely won't be doing that. It's just giving you the reports. It, it, uh, it's giving us the reports, yes, exactly. And you may have already said this. Did you say what the time frame was for rolling it all out, what we think it's gonna take, maybe overall just? Our, our, our hope is by the the end of the year, by oh, June, okay. um, to, to roll it out. It could be sooner, or we could uh, need a little longer on that, but um, that is, or, that is yeah, definitely. Kind of like to start with the central office, um, you know, um, try to work out some of the kinks, and then maybe go to a very small school and build it up from there until we start you know, instead of starting at a high school or both at a high school level, just kind of start small and get our bearings about us, understand, you know, where the missteps may be to, to get it right, and then we'll just kind of... A feel for the accounting there. department. They have to work with the old and the new. It, it, it will Thank be a struggle. Yes, mm -hmm. it is. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Once it's all in and done, it would be seamless. It, exactly. The efficiency. Employees are, are going to love it because no more paper leave slips. Yes. They can log in and see their absences a lot um, user-friendly than what we currently have for them as well so I um, I think they'll they'll and they'll be receptive too that's awesome I'm, I'm, I'm happy to see this probably in three months I'll ask a question and we'll go six months and we'll get mm -hmm. it lined up take your time <laughs> do it right but in my opinion sooner the better yep anything else did you no, I was going to make a motion. Oh, Mike, go ahead. You got it. All right, Mr. President, I move to appro uh, for the approval of the Power School Group LLC contract with Time Clock Plus for the implementation of a new time and attendance system in the amount of $155,202.40, budget source Maryland Leeds Grant conditionally approved. Second. I have a motion. Second. Also, there say aye. 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 Thank, have you. It. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Jane. Thank, thank you for everything you've done on this. It's awesome. Energy. I'm sure no one can imagine where she worked before. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta, you gotta stop that. Uh, citizens' participation. Any public comment out there? She's Hearing none. We have future meetings on November the 16th. will be a work session at 5 o'clock. We also have our next regular board meeting on December the 7th at 6 p.m. Uh, do I have a motion to go back into the executive session? So moved. Second. All those say aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you, QACT.